for tuning in. Uh, this week's River Flag is a little pattern I posted a picture of on Facebook this week, and there's been a few requests for it, so I thought I'd show it while the iron's hot. Uh, in the vise, I've got a Hanak 310 barbless hook. It's at size 12, and it's a heavy wired hook, which is going to help me, because my weight is going to be hidden underneath the dressing this week, and I'm going to add additional weight using some adhesive foil. So the first thing I'm going to do then is take a little slither of the foil off. I'm just using my number two snips and I'm going to take off not quite an eighth of an inch slither and I'll take that all the way up. Now what you do with this foil is it's like a sticker. So there's some um, adhesive plastic, which I'm just peeling away there, you can see. And I'm going to use my thumb nail just to hold it into place where I want to start it. And I'm going to get a few wraps of the lead, adhesive lead around the shank. I'm going to not come all the way to the front and I've just switched back on myself now and I'm coming down the other side I don't want to go too far though because I'm going to switch again to get a nice thorax shape now this wire is dead easy to work with and once you've got it to where you want it just press in with your thumbnail might be not very clear to see there, but I've just snipped away a bit of the lead and I've got that nice thorax going on. Now, the thread I'm going to use today is uh, the Vivas. It's E1 and it's a black thread. And first thing I'm going to do is get on a bit of wax. I can catch that in just above my eye and I'm going to wrap in wide wraps across my leather adhesive wire. I'm just going to stop there, remove my rat's tail. Now before I do anything else, I'm just going to add a little layer of super glue and before I cast my thread on and this just helps keep everything solid and in one position so now I'm going to build the base of my body and I want to hide all that lead under my thread wraps really or as much as possible because you don't want any of this glinting through the dressing so there we go that's looking pretty well covered so I'm fairly happy with that and um, the tail of the fly I'm going to select a, a feather from a good old partridge cape looking a little sorry for its cell nowadays I might need to try and find another one and the feathers I want it's not, I don't want any of this fluffy stuff. I'm going to strip all that away and I want to get to these nice barred feathers in the top area. So I'll just strip away the fluff there. A bit more. And I've got these barred feathers. Now, if I come in and grab them and rip them off like so, when I transfer them to my other hand, the point should pretty much align. Now it's not going to be a long tail, so I'm not overly worried about the, the length I've got there. The tail on this fly is probably going to be about two eighths of an inch. So I'll catch that in. Right on the top. And that's looking okay. Next, I'm going to add my rib. And for for this one, I'm using ultra wire, UTC ultra wire. It's in copper. 
and this is the small version. Now I'm going to catch my ribbon on my side just where the thorax begins. There we go. I'm just going to move the hook in the vise slightly so the thread doesn't come over onto my tail. And I can move that back when I'm ready. Now the dubbin I'm going to use is uh, the Trout Stalkers Tweet Natural Dubbin. But you can use any sort of squirrel dub. Um, there's so many dubbins out there, the choice is endless. Uh, I just prefer this this stuff. It's it's really easy to work with and there's quite a lot of effort goes into its making and, and that's shown with little fibres of red and yellow and just little interesting stuff to, to give it something a bit more than your normal squirrel dub. Now I'm going to bring this dub in that I've just put onto my thread all the way up to where the thorax starts pretty much. I'm happy enough with that. Now at this point I could rough it out a little but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait until the end and I'm gonna bring my copper rib now over in the opposite direction to the way I took my dubbing. Bring that all the way up to the front and catch that in. At this point I can now bring my hook back up to the top end where the work's going to happen from now on. Now keeping hold of my thread I'm going to take my wire and twist that away. Next thing I've got to do is add in my thorax cover. So I've got some nice pheasant tail here, lovely uh, shade to it this one. And I'm going to come in with my snips and take a fairly generous amount. Now I've just noticed there, if you have a look here, on some older pheasant tail some of the tip fibres may be missing. And the, and, and usually that wouldn't be any odds to me, but on this occasion I want to use the tips. So I'm going to uh, discard that part, have a look for a better selection. And that's better. So you can see here I've got all my tips intact. And all I'm going to do is a little shuffle up. Because I want them not to be... They don't need to be perfect, but I'd like them to be kind of in line. And I want them to extend over the front of the eye once I've tied this on to, to form my legs. So I'm going to take about the length of the fly twice. So my tips are protruding past. Now I'm going to hold that with my left hand. Catch that in. And once it's secured, I can come in and remove my waist section there. So it's looking okay so far. Next then, I'm going to add my thorax material. And again, it's just another little pinch of the same dubbing. Uh, I've cut it on here. Just going to transfer it. And I'm going to dub that onto my thread. work it up the hook and then I can hold my thorax cover out the way while I get the first couple of wraps in and then bring it all to the front. Next then I come in with my thumb and forefinger grab a hold of my thorax cover 
and bring it straight over. Now I'm going to use my left hand just to twist the bobbin here and get a couple of wraps in. Now next I'm going to bring in my dubbing needle and just try and separate out these legs into two, sorry my fingers are in the way here, it's just quite difficult to do this. without having your all your fingers in front of the camera so apologies for that but I'll do my best to try and even them out now if I turn the vise on the side you can see I've kind of got it into two separate separate bits and what I can do now is get my bring my thumb and forefinger in pull it all back behind the eye and I've just missed that so I'm gonna have to do it again Get it all back behind the eye and then catch it in. Now, you just got to play about a bit with the fibres and they will sit for you eventually. And the thing is, once, once you start fishing with this fly, it just starts working a lot better. Now to finish off, I'm simply going to take a little bit of UV and come in to my head. Now, unlike the, the Vivas, which I'd get away with snapping this clear, what I like to do with this stuff, the Vivas 50D I mean, I like to cure it before I uh, snip away my thread. So I've caught that in now, and last but not least, just to scruff it up a little, I'm just gonna turn it on its side so I can see what I'm doing. And once it's wet, it's um, a very effective fly. Now, before I just sign off, there's just something I've forgotten to do. And I've noticed that when I've scruffed it out. And, and that is to protect my thorax cover. And it's quite important this, because if you don't, the pheasant tail is such a delicate material you might get one or two fish, but then it's you're in a bit of trouble. Your your thorax cover will just snap away. But a little touch of UV resin on that, it does help. It's not bulletproof, but it makes a little bit of a difference. And there you have it. I uh, haven't got a name for it. It's a, a little beastie bug. Uh, the size 12 is a lot smaller than you would think and the more you fish with it the better the fly becomes thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time